Welcome back to Sleds and Gear. Today we're going to be testing some heated gloves. And I wanted to test some name brand heated gloves. On Amazon there's hundreds of off-brand heated gloves, but today we're going to be testing out the Fly Title heated gloves. And I found these on eBay and they were an extra good deal at $50 for the pair. So let's pull them out and take a look and see what we've got here. In the package, we have both of the heated gloves. These are size 2XL. We also have a charger that will charge two batteries at one time with a USB-C connection. And we also have two lithium-ion batteries. We also have a case here. Taking a look at the gloves, they have the on and off switch and they seem to be kind of lightweight. I stick my hand in here and they're they're fairly lightweight so uh, that's kind of interesting but uh, 2XL these are my hands aren't normally a 2XL these seem to run kind of small. The one thing that this tag does say is that uh, to test out these gloves you could pour water into the glove and see that it doesn't leak out of the glove, but I'm not going to do that with a brand new pair of gloves here. But it's interesting that the tag actually says that you can pour water in the glove, and these do have a minimal amount of 3M insulation. They also have a reflective, reflective little triangle here on the back. And we'll install the batteries here and turn them on, and I'll use my infrared uh, laser or I guess the laser thermometer here to see how they warm up. To get a baseline temperature I'm just going to scan the back of the glove here with the laser thermometer and they're reading about 53 degrees Fahrenheit or so. So these have three temperature levels low, medium, and high. Low is green, medium is orange, and high is red. So we will take this fly racing pair of gloves and also compare it to a generic uh, Chinese made pair of gloves that I've used for several years. These other gloves that I have have a much larger battery and I'm assuming that they would last a little bit, the battery would last a little bit longer. So let's go ahead and compare the fly gloves to these uh, Velazio gloves that I've had for several years and have been pretty happy with. So what we're going to do is compare these gloves side by side and I'm going to turn them both pairs of gloves on low and we'll let them warm up for 10 or 20 minutes, probably probably 20 minutes. And I'll use the laser thermometer to scan the backs of the gloves. You can see the Velazios are right out of the package, about the same temperature as the flies in the low 50s. So let's let these gloves warm up for a bit and we'll come back and, and take a temperature reading. The flies seem to be warming up already. So I'll just give them a little feel here. Yep, both pairs are warming up. And so let's wait. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and we'll take our thermometer here and scan the gloves. We'll scan the back of the glove, which is where the heating elements are. And it looks like the flies are warming up, especially in the finger area, to about 80 degrees, high 70s, 80. And around the cuff, it hasn't warmed up at all. So as you go towards the fingers, it gets much warmer. And we'll check the palm of the fly gloves. And the palm of the fly gloves aren't really that warm either. And the, the backs, the undersides of the fingers aren't really that warm. So the heating element looks to be centered in the finger area primarily. And at low reading, we're at like 82 degrees on the fly gloves. And the Velazios feel warm to the touch. But when I put the thermometer on them, they're only reading about 60-some degrees. And I think the primary reason for this is that the Velazios have much more insulation than the fly. And you can just tell them by their size uh, initially. The flies are very thin, which could be concerning because 
if the batteries were to run out or you just forgot the batteries or they malfunctioned, you'd be left with gloves that weren't very warm. So you'd have to be pretty certain that you were close to some place where you could either get other gloves or or you weren't in an area that was too too cold. So what we'll do after taking the test on the low temperature is we'll kick them both up to medium and we'll wait another 20 minutes or so and come back and take a temperature reading and see how they do. And another 20 minutes have elapsed and we'll take a temperature reading here on the fly gloves. You can see in the finger area it was reading in the upper 90s up to around 100 degrees and that's just in the finger area. The regular body of the glove is only in the 60s so the heating element seems to be around the fingers which is the most important area anyway since that's the fingers are the area that has the least blood flow and I would think that 100 degrees is pretty good for a heated glove. You can see that the underside of the fingers aren't as warm and the palm definitely does not have a heating element in it, which is okay. Uh, these gloves are primarily going to be used for snowmobiling and you don't want thick insulation in the palm anyway because the, the bar warmers, the, the heated grips, need to be able to project their heat through the glove. You can see the Velazios are about 88, 90 degrees on the highest setting and I think that is primarily because they have a lot of insulation so the heat isn't coming to the outside of the glove which actually should make the battery last longer you can ride with them on lower heat settings so what we'll do is we'll kick these uh, I guess the Velazios might have been on high already and we'll kick all three or both of them uh, to the highest setting and we'll come back in another 20 minutes and do our final reading at the highest setting and see how warm they get. And welcome back. Another 20 minutes have passed and we'll take a temperature reading on the fly. Gloves and we're reading about 100 to 105 depending upon where I put the laser pointer. Maybe up to 106 which is plenty warm and it wouldn't burn your hand obviously you can't have them that warm. So I would think that, uh, you know, with a reading of 100 to 110, that's, that's plenty warm. Now, the Velazios have been on high, and we're seeing readings in the low 90s, low to mid 90s, which is decent. I think with a glove with as much insulation as the Velazios, that the temperature reading of in the mid 90s would be just fine. This winter, I'll be taking both pairs of gloves with me as I ride my snowmobile. But I wouldn't want to rely on the fly gloves as my only glove. If the battery were to die or they just stopped working, I think it could get pretty cold pretty quick. And I wouldn't want them to be my only glove. If you like this kind of content and you find this helpful, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.